Hello, everybody, and welcome to another cool episode of What's That? I am Dr. Alan Partridge, Adobe eLearning Evangelist, and today we're going to be talking all about the new gradient effects and other cool effects inside of Adobe Captivate 5.5. So let's get started, shall we? All right, so what we're going to do here is just click here and then say File, New Project, Blank Project. We'll make a new blank project. doesn't really matter what size. So we make a new blank project except the default size. I'm going to scroll that over a little bit so that we can see that whole project there in the open space. Okay, now, in order to make that cool gradient background, you can make that gradient background behind objects or you can make it behind the whole page. I'm just going to uncheck use master slide background and uncheck project background that'll free up this little color chip here we use the color chip notice that it now has a paint bucket for solid fills but also a gradient fill option click on gradient fill and boom right away you've got gradient fills you can make adjustments to those gradient fills change the color switch the directions um, do all the kinds of things you would normally do with a gradient fill you also have a number of presets that are available easy at your disposal no problem. Next step, I want to put something over the top of it. Let's put a transparent image over the top of it. I'm just going to click back to the other project that I have open currently. And there, I'm going to grab this flower. So I'm going to grab the flower, and then I'll click back to the project I had in the first place. I'm going to use Command-V on my Mac and just paste that into place. So now my flower is there. It's where I want it to be. Notice this funny little handle here at the top. We've not seen those in previous versions of Captivate. Just take that little funny handle and drag it, and automatically you'll be able to rotate the image or the piece of text or whatever it is on the actual display stage area. I just click the button here on the upper left to insert a text caption. I don't want any background on that, so I'm going to click Transparent in the Properties Inspector. I'll move this little text caption over to the place that I want it to be, and then I'll just click inside of it to edit it. So I can select my little uh, text element, and then I can change the size of the font, change the color of the font, the nature of the font, size of the window, all that kind of stuff. Maybe change the angle a little bit, make it look and feel the way that I want it to look and feel, drag it into the position that I want it to be, all that good kind of stuff. I think I'll probably change the font too while I'm in there. I don't know what I'll do. Maybe uh, something like that. Okay. So now once I've got everything the way that I want it to be, then I'm good to go. And I can also add a drop shadow to this text element as well. So there are all kinds of new cool graphical widgets. Look down here, you'll find the shadow element. Then all I have to do is click enable to turn that shadow on. You'll notice that the shadow is adopted from the last used shadow. So I really like that because it echoes what I've got there in that other shadow that's gonna. All right, one more cool trick. I'm just gonna hover over here and change this into a shape tool. We want the shape tool of the rectangle. So we'll take that rectangle, and then we're going to draw a rectangle shape out here. Let's just draw a rectangle shape. Ta-da! Like so. Okay, so now we have a new rectangle shape. Well, the fill for the rectangle shape also now contains the option for the gradients, right? So we can go in there, and we can actually use the gradient tools in whatever way, shape, or form that we want to um, and create any kind of interesting gradient effect that we'd really like to use, right? Now maybe I want to do something like, okay, well, I want these colors to be slightly different. I could actually choose this color picker here, come over here and choose the colors that are in my flower, like so, and end up with a kind of a flower color background and then make that uh, rectangle the size that I want it to be. And then I can change the layers, right? Now you can do that a couple ways in Captivate. You can change the layers by choosing Arrange and then telling it you want to send something backward or send something to the back. Or you can go into the timeline and you can adjust the order of things in the stack. See how this rectangle is at the top? All I have to do is drag that rectangle down and then it'll be in the back instead of on the top. And now I can just close that timeline by clicking on the bar, and boom, I've automatically got it back in the background. So quickly and easily, then I'm able to put that piece in where I want it to be. I can make it a decorative element. I can set it up the way I want it to be. You can see right now that the line around that is a blue color, but I could easily change that color to, again, take advantage of the colors in the, in the flower itself so that it 
uses those kinds of colors. And I could even go crazy and add a shadow to that particular block as well. So before you know it, we got all kinds of fancy effects going on and we've uh, highlighted things the way that we wanted them to be highlighted and we've begun to create some really cool effects in all kinds of different ways, right? So we can really explore and play with the new Captivate 5.5 features and see if we can't come up with combinations that really excite us. All right, until next time, I'm Dr. Alan Partridge, Adobe eLearning Evangelist, and that's what's that.